Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, a little while ago, a thing came out called the Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. Now, probably quite a few people have gotten this box and have no clue what to do with the stuff inside. So I put up a poll on my Facebook page, seeing if people would like a little tutorial on how you could use these things after, of course, I learned how to use them myself. So this video is about how to use the supplies in the Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. Now, first up, I have over here the list of things that you get in the Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. Alrighty, so we've got our 12 Spectrum Noir markers, which are cheap, as Jazz explains them, cheap alternatives to the Copic markers and I'd say he's fairly correct in that because when I was trying them out you can do some pretty awesome things with these so I'll show you an example this one here this was done with the Spectrum Noir without anything else just the markers well and the drawing you know you can do some really not that one some really nice things with these pens and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute Next up, we've got our polychromos. So our expensive Faber-Castell pencils. So they're just kind of very pastel -y pencils. Really nice, really nice quality pencils. And then we have our sketchbook, which is obviously the really nice card sketchbook that oh, feels amazing. And it's special. I tell you, this book is special to your normal sketchbook. And then we have the pencil case, which mine's all messy because I've been using all my stuff. But Jazz's favorite pencil case. He also has a specific way he uses it, which I'll work out that before the end of the video and put it all in there like it. But it is all the little things. So we've got the fine liners, which are these guys, which there's four different kinds. We've got the brush, which you probably can't see this as brush, but that's all right. The brush marker one, which is obviously a brush. Um, and then you've got the 2.2, .2, and 0.8 of those, which are pretty fun to do too. We also have the mechanical pencil, which is just a pacer. You know, just a normal, ordinary piece with an eraser on the end. We also have the blue Prismacolor pencil for sketching. The Tombow pen, so the two-sided pen. It's got a brush and it's got a fine tip. And we also have my favourite thing of this whole set is this mask, this marker. He calls it the Fudensuke brush pen and uh, it's the best fine liner I've ever used and I love it a lot. It's just, it's great. It's like a, it's a brush marker but it's not a brush marker and then it's amazing. It's great. I'll show you later. Anyways, and then we also have the eraser, the fiber castle eraser. And another big thing I like using is the Jazzy, you forgot, you forgot a sharpener. So I've got my own little sharpener in case I need it. And I got one of these actually, because you need a decent sharpener for the polychrome roads because you don't want to ruin them. But this doesn't come in the, the pack, a sharpener, but Jazzy didn't include a sharpener. He also included some card, card but we're not gonna worry about it too much. That's just more for the markers. We're gonna use the book. But anyways, so, Come over here to my book, my lovely, lovely little book. So, obviously we did some drawings for Jazza. Not very, not overly excitable. We got here. So I did a little bit of a play around with all these spies. Zoom in. I kind of just played around with what each thing would work to, with each thing. So the polychromos, the colored pencils, with the water, they don't really 
do much at all like it just kind of smudges it grossly so you don't put water on them the markers with water just kind of fade out the markers so they don't they don't even smudge when you put water on them straight away like it's great then we've got the markers and the polychromos so it makes nice a nice shading effect I'm not sure if it's very visible but you can see how the, the markers there and then the polychromos are there but yeah and then we've got the blender and the polychromos so the colorless blender the pen is pretty much just alcohol in a pen that you use to blend the polychrom not the polychromos the markers themselves so I figured what would I do if I used the alcohol on the pencil and it kind of lightens and smudges it out a little bit on my pencil which kind of looks nice and then I've got the marker the blender and the polychromo so I put the pencil and then I've put the marker and then I've smudged over the top of it with the blender it has a nice smudgy effect and up here I have tested the Tombow with the blender just because I wanted to see I just kind of wanted to see what it did really and it's so much pretty hard which also brings me to the point where these guys you'd have to wait until the Tombow or, or the fine liners see the fine liners dry before you put the markers on them otherwise you're gonna have a lot of smudging although the, my favorite pen the calligraphy pen which is the fancy one this guy did pretty well I mean it made the paper yellow around it but it pretty much straight off you could put copa, uh, the, the markers straight on top of that without that smudging too much like it was really good but we'll go through all that as we go through some drawings and then we've got marker plus marker so blending two markers together all there first just two markers together and then we've got that with the blender so the colorless blender I think I like that one better that one just kind of looks really gross and smudgy but yeah that's just some rough things to think about and then we've got this so I drew that and some ferrets so we've got this guy first up which is drawn with the pencils and this guy so the greatest thing I love about this guy is how it affects this paper so I don't know if I can get the camera to it has like such a nice like it makes me feel like it's comic book like so like when you open a new comic book it's got that nice feel I feel like this next one might work better look at that one see how those lines just have that Oof, I just love it so much but yeah so I'm going to show you how to use the markers for the big one because he's nice and big and the colored pencils for the little one so I guess we're doing the colored pencils first so polychromos are very I call them pastel-y pencils because they're very I don't know there's a texture to them that's kind of like pastels it's a little brochure that tells you a little bit about them in the book and the colors but yeah so I've got a little guy now say I wanted to get Um, we'll go green and yellow so we'll go yellow my thing is if you start off with the lightest color you want so like for example I'll probably go yellow and a little bit of brown for the shading so the yellow and then you just kind of put it on like a colored normal colored pencil but the best way to use these guys is to push really hard so if I zoomed in here And say I, I, li I did it like this. It really, it leaves a weird texture and it's, it's light, but it really leaves, you can't really see it. I wonder if my camera, yeah, there we go. See, it leaves like a really gross kind of texture. So your best bet is to dig real deep and like scrub it into the paper there. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So 
So we can push that in there like that. Scribble, scribble, scribbles. It looks great. So I'm just gonna quickly do these guys, this. So see that already nice deep colour in there. quickly colour in his belly and his little wing flap because that's what his sky is gonna be. Now that we've got all our yellow down, I'm going to I'm not gonna use orange as my shading colour, I'm gonna use this light brown. So with this it is the the burnt ochre and what you do once you work out where your sun's coming from so say for example we're gonna make it come from this side over here over over this way so our sun is gonna come in there so then with your pencil you shade the pieces see it goes down really well I'll see if I can that's as far as we can go down Alright, so you just kind of add that in there as much as you need and then blend it out a little bit. So the great thing, these things kind of work like those pen, those markers, you can blend them out. The polychromos blend really well. So I'll just quickly do this and I'll show you. The good thing though is that unlike the markers, you don't have to wait, you, you don't have to do it straight away otherwise they dry and it kind of ruins it. What I find with markers is that they dry too quickly for you to keep working on them, and it sucks. See, I'm not worrying too much about colouring fully in the lines, like, obviously, be reasonably neat, but these guys blend so well over the top that you won't even see those mistakes later unless it's like literally all the way out here somewhere okay so now that we've got that I'm gonna go back and grab this yellow pencil and so at the moment I'll show you He's looking a little bit with that gross texture sort of thing. Now, if I'm gonna pull this down here, I'll refocus, grab my yellow, and just go over the top with that where I was blending that. Just kind of scrub it in there. Just over the top. And it just gives it, it makes it look more gradient instead of just put down there. See, and then ready, when we pick it back up again, it's less gross. Like, obviously, they're pencils, so they're gonna have that texture to them. But 
you can see that it's more gradient like seamless gradient than the gross like just changing color then, once we do that get pretty much pretty set I guess you could also probably add some blues to the shadows or purple because he gives a pretty good range of pencils like he says that he picks the pencil colors and all that so he gives you a pretty good range that you can blend them out and everything so the pencils themselves are these guys here so you know we've got your white your black then you've got your red orange yellow then your blues your greens and your browns and then this little this I guess it's supposed to be a purple but it's more of a red purple than like a violet which I think I would have preferred a violet but this one's nice too anyways I'm gonna go ahead and finish this guy like finish putting the colors down on this guy I'm gonna speed it up for the for the video and I'll see you when this guy's all colored in As you can see, nice and coloured in. We got not really any too gross, creasy bits. Now, you can obviously just leave it like this, and it'll be nice and, I guess, nice. But you can do one of two things, which I'm only going to do one of the two things. You can get your blender, so the marker blender. And just go over it and mix in those colors a little bit more and it softens the textures like I've already, you can see my blenders kind of because I find blenders pretty useless with pens because they literally just make it white and gross and it has this gross smudging effect but the alcohol on these pencils looks really nice so if I come down and just apply it there and it kind of just blends it in because it's the alcohol and not just water it adds just a little bit of a and like you don't have to worry about mixing colors because it just kind of changes to those colors it's gonna add a layer I guess this could also seal it in a way like just blending all that in there it doesn't make it perfectly blended so it's not gonna be as seamless as like having the, just the pens which I love but it just kind of blends some of those creases especially with the pencil like it puts all those like white tiny spaces that sometimes you get with pencils and just mixes them in because it spreads that color just the littlest bit
Let's see, and now as you can see, obviously, I'm just gonna clean this off. Just make sure you give it a bit of a, like yes, it'll stain your tip, but if you just squiggle it on the paper until all the color physically comes out of that nib, then it's all right. See how we're just, now it's just, just the color. There's no color in it. Just so you don't, like, yes, it's gonna stain the nib, but it won't stay in your next drawing if you get it all out of there now. I think here there's also a way you can clean nibs. I think it's like method or something, but look that up before you do it, because. But anyway, so we've got, as you can see, it's kind of moved all the white spaces and just blended them all in so it looks almost seamless. Now the next thing, one of my favorite things to do with the drawing is to add white highlights. So the beauty about this pen that he's given us, which I've bought before, so it's definitely been one of the things I'm gonna be buying again because these guys are brilliant. Like I, this is probably one of the best white gel pens you can get. Like those Sakura gel things are crappy compared to these. Like they're great. Anyways, so I like to just go over the edges where the sun's gonna hit add this because it's so clear and ooh, I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can and I never draw the the highlight of the eye until I've used this because it just looks so nice like say the Sun's up here so we'll see immediately it's just so beautiful like it's ooh, I love this pen so much and yeah you just so our Sun's up here so I'm gonna it's just so clean. And it goes on so nicely. Like I'm not even pressing on the paper. I'm just lightly going over the top. So like, like, like yeah. if you press, that's, that's fine too. But you just have to do a light and it's just nice. Obviously you have to watch it because this will, if you wipe over it before it's dry, it'll just smudge it. You don't smudge it until it's dry on the paper. So just keep continuing to do this. And this white literally goes over everything. So it'll go if you do put it on your lines, like in here, it will just be white. Like you can probably use this as a correction pen as well, it's that good. gonna go ahead and kind of add some some highlights in there without smudging it everywhere See? See how nice it looks. Another thing I also like to do, especially with these Jazza supplies, is when you're done, grab your pacer, your lead, it's just lead pencil, and go over the shadows a little bit more. So it just kind of adds a little bit more dark in those shadows. See the difference between this wing and the rest of them? This one has that little bit of extra shading and it just gives it that extra pop. It just looks really, really nice. And it also, the great thing is you can put your finger over it and just, because you've put that alcohol on there, it makes it like a bit rubbery. So you can smudge it in there just so it's a little bit less Kind of like smudging lead pencil anyways. But yeah, and then just go ahead and add that in there. And in all your darker places. And it just, it just kind of adds that extra shading. Obviously you can also do this with your black pencil, but I like to do it with the lead because it's not as overbearing. Like it adds just that little bit of extra but not too much. 
I guess it depends on your the feel of your drawing. So if you were going for like a dark and you know gloomy sort of feel, then black would probably work better. But because my dude's nice and nice and light and happy, that color just works quite nicely for him. But that's how that is how, ladies and gentlemen, you use the polychromos in Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. Obviously, you can buy the polychromos separate to Jazz's box, but they are pretty damn good for, for colored pencils, I tell you that. And I don't like colored pencils. And they all come nice and sharp, and obviously I've used these, but they come nice and sharp and in your tin with a little brochet and all that. And then I also, in this piece, this bit, I use the, the pen, I think, what does he call it? He calls it the Zebra Mechanical Pencil. Obviously all of these things on this list, you can buy outside of this box. So if you did miss out on the box the first and second time, then you can buy all this stuff individually, you know? It's, except the only thing you can't buy individually is the Spectrum Noir markers because Jazz have got them specially made. But yeah. Anyways, it's also the Signo, but trust me, you'll be seeing the Signo a lot. Like this one, I use this like all the time. So next up, I'll show you a bit on the Spectrum Noir markers. Obviously on this little guy. So I have a bone to pick with these Spectrum Noir. They go in, the, when you're coloring in, it feels always, always feels like they're gonna run out of ink but they're not. So it's like, but then when you finish, it looks amazing. So these guys here are Spectrum Noir. So if you get the box, obviously there's different spec, you can get a set of Spectrum Noir markers, but they won't be these because Jazz has specifically made them with that brush nib just for this box. And his, you get a nice little special edition box with Jazzer on it. And tells you all the colors, tells you that it is Draw With Jazza plus Smart Art plus Spectrum Noir. So these you actually can't get outside this box. You can get Spectrum Noir markers just with the nib. I think it's a nib and like Copic markers, it has that chisel tip. So it'll be a nib and a chisel tip on the normal markers, I believe, but don't quote me on that one. Anyways, so, Jazz has given us as many colors that you can blend with. And I like the fact it gives us a violet one this time. So these are actually pretty terrible color swatches because I swatched them in my other book over somewhere else, which you'll see the different colors in a minute anyways. And the red's much more red and you know, et cetera, et cetera. These are like the digital versions of these colors. So yeah, make sure you swatch before you use them. Anyways, we, so we have them all labeled and named up here, which is great for a lot of people. This is just such a great thing. You know, you've got your grass. This isn't how they come in because I've rearranged them a few times after using them. So they come a little bit differently, but you know, your grass, your ultramarine, amethyst, red, amber, orange, you know, those main, those main good colors. Then he gives you two like skin color kind of thing. So like the apricot and the pale tan. So it's for like your skin colors so you can make characters like the human characters. Then he gives you three grays. So this gray is practically white, I guess. You could, um, you blend on, it's like shading white things. And then your gray, that gray is kind of like the optimum gray. I guess I've got a bit here. Um, so that's the white gray. It just kind of goes over the top. And then this is the optim. I like this gray because it's nice for shadows and shading and going over the top. Like obviously you can go over the top with the, the darker colors, like the blue and stuff for shading. But the gray over the top of the colors just gives it a nice shader, shadow sort of feel to it. And then there's a really, really, really dark gray that's practically black. It's not black, but it's practically black. And I kind of, I guess with the 12, it is good. It's a good set of 12 colors, but I do wish there was another middle gray. I wouldn't take any out for the middle gray, but, but a yeah, gray between so these two. That's that. 
as we get into it. Now, let's see. So first, I'm gonna dust this. The great, I do tell you, the greatest thing about this book is the card. So it's not thin. You can probably hear it. Look wobble of the paper. It's like a nice thick sheet of paper that's almost brilliant for Copics, like, or not Copics, the markers, because the markers do go straight through it. But when you think about it, so does the Copic marker paper, like the special made paper for the Copics, but, well, the, re the reasonable one. That's this stuff. This stuff, the Express stuff. It does exactly the same thing. It just goes straight through it, except the Express stuff is more plasticky for the Copics. Whereas this is more, I guess, smooth. And I like that about it. All right, so because we did yellow and green for this guy, I'm going to go... Maybe blue and green, blue and yellow, blue and green. Like I said, not too many colors to choose from, but they are all right colors to choose from. So I'm gonna go blue and green, I guess, for the main-ish sort of thing, because this blue is really dark and the green is pretty all right. So for the green, I'm gonna do his belly, his underwings, and potentially the spines. So this guy, the Illustrator Spectrum no by Spectrum Noir, you get two nibs. I haven't used this nib yet, but it's generally, I guess, like you could use it for like, not calligraphy, but tiny lines, that sort of thing. It's just, it's like your normal pen text and nib thing. Now the one we all love, the one that Jazz has specifically made for this set is the paint, the brush nib. So this beautiful, beautiful nib here. This guy's beautiful. My only problem is when you put the pen down on the paper, it just feels like it's gonna run out. So like, see that? It's like a grain. When you first put it down, there's a grain to it, but later when you fill in all the area, it kind of just blends. But make sure you do it all at once because it'll dry like that and you'll have this one line just chilling there. See, like, there you go, see that? It just... And it also has a remarkable smell, which is not the greatest smell for a pen. But yeah, see, and you can see all the patches and the bits. Like, it's not perfect, but it's all right. And then, so I'm just gonna go ahead and color in the rest of this green. It also makes an atrocious noise, like drawing on plastic paper. The <laughs> when you're drawing which is not the most pleasant sound. See, like when you go down really quickly, it goes really gross. So you have to like kind of slowly put it on there. And that's what bothers me about these. Whereas the Copics, you just place it and it's done. You know, it's nice and oily and good. Whereas this is just grainy and coarse. And it's, I don't know, it just feels gross. And I find you have to put a few layers for it to look clean. But then again, when it dries, it goes like pretty much seamless. So it's, if you can get past the coarse and the grinding, then you got a good pen. Again, this pen is that special calligraphy pen that I really like. But yeah, so see, I've also made a little bit of a main mistake, but that's that's all right. So we've got our dude, and then yeah, so you can tell, you can see already that it's kind of dispersed, so it's flat. So not as coarse as it was. It just kind of blends into the paper, I guess. Like 
I'll put it sideways, you can see. You can kind of see all of the bits, like the coarseness, but the longer it dries, the more it kind of just blends into the paper, which, as you can see, is going through the paper. But it won't go to this other side, I found. No matter how, well, it does if you're really bad, so like, you can see on my little poor little ferret over here, there's a bit of the yellow from his head. But that's because I was trying to make a brown and I mixed like four on the one. So if you go pretty lightly, if you tread lightly and don't blend a hundred colors into one page, then it won't, it shouldn't go onto this other page. It will definitely go here, but it won't go here. So next we have our blue. So like I said, this blue is very dark. Like it's terrifyingly dark. So I'll show you on his face. It's practically black. I don't know if it, yeah, see on the, without the light, it's practically black, which is okay, because I planned this around it. But, whereas on the box, it's actually, and, and you can't, with Cokes, you can put the lids on the backs of them and you don't lose the lids, but with these guys, you have to hold the lids because you can't clip them, which kind of sucks. But yeah, but as I was saying, the blue here is pretty, it's a bit lighter than, you know, but this is also on plastic and digital. So make sure you swatch before you use them. Yeah, they have a very strong, obviously probably alcoholic smell to them. But there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to keep colouring in the rest of this blue and I'll be back in a moment. Alrighty, now that I've coloured that all in, I'll just move some things. I will show you how to shade with this guy. Pulling pens. Now, 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 now. Because we have such dark colours, I can either do one or two, one of two things. So, well, I will do both actually for this one. I'm going to use the grey to shade the green and purple to shade the blue. So you can either just use the grey, the, the grey pens straight out, or you can use a darker colour to what you have. So if you, you were using yellow, you could use orange or, you know, that sort of thing. So I'll start with this one first. And I'm just going to assume that our sun is coming from So that means if it's coming this way, we'll have a little bit of shadow under that wing because of the wing covering. 
But see, when I put that down, it just kind of adds a little bit of a darker moment. It's not heaps dark, but it's like a touch dark. That's when the darker grey comes in to get the, the more into the edges. And then you do the same with the rest. So I'm just gonna add some shadow to the outsides of these. It doesn't matter if it's obvious to start with because each layer adds more to your bits. So for example, like I'll go like this and I'll just quickly finish quickly finish in here, adding the details to his belly. Exaggerate those shadows a little bit. Now the grey is just going to blend straight in, well, depending on the colour you're using. So I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm going to get this this darker grey, which is the ice cream 9. And I'm going to go in where all the de detailing, so in there like that. Now as you can see, it's obviously significantly darker. That's when you grab the other grey and you just kind of blend over the top of it which softens that. So it's kind of more gradient. And if you go over the top of your green, you just go grab your green and just kind of blend that in there a bit too. Like so. So you have a bit of a gradient going through. Now I'll do it again over here for these spines. Grab that dark. like that and then I'll get that lighter gray again and just kind of blend it in there roughly Keep blending until you're satisfied with the what you're done. Like that so you can see it's kind of just radiating in as well as giving that extra detail and then that's also starting to fade into the paper a bit more so yeah so then I'm gonna add just a little bit more gray to this wing because I haven't really done all that much shading to it so I'm just gonna kind of do that not too much because it is under that light Blending that in like that. And then for the blue, for the blue part, we're going to use our purple because it's darker than the blue itself and add the shading and do the same thing. So for example, over here on the wing is going to be that purple because it's shadow. So you can't really see that it's purple per se, but you can see that line it's giving that the shading for it. Like 
Whereas the actual color to this pen is literally like, it's a very purpley purple. And yeah, add that in as you like. Literally not heaps of it. And then again, if it hasn't blended in well, you just grab your other your blue that you did that started with. And you just kind of mix it in there. Works better if both layers are wet, whereas my blues are dry because I did the most of the the wings and stuff the other day before my camera went flat. And then when you want to do the gray, so I've left these horns because I wanted to show you a trick. So this gray is for like shading, shading your whites. So there's, it's not really going to show up. See, it doesn't really show up very well. But once you stick everything else on top of it and you can see the difference. once you start putting the white on it so that it'll be a different you won't be able to see it on the camera oh you might it might be a little bit might not then we grab the next gray so the ice gray four and you do that layer and it just gives it that base so next to the light gray you'll see the difference so compared so compared to the white out here, you'll see the slight difference in the grey and that other grey. It's not much, but it's pretty reasonable when you're doing like white shading per se. And then that dark grey when I find it, that's just kind of add a little bit of detail. It's like extra dark. That's why I feel like Jazz is sh probably should have put a least like a more darker than that that gray, that cool gray, cool gray one, because it's practically white and it really doesn't do all that much. So I guess you could use it to blend the other gray, but it really doesn't show much difference. But yeah, and then when if you were to color in something like over here, it just makes really no difference at all. It'll fade into the paper. So the light grey is more for you, you shading the whites. Ooh, I also like this, the tooth, that's a good example. So you've got to go like in there. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a line, not much. Just the tiniest bit on his tooth. That's pretty much what it does. It just adds that little bit of shadow sort of thing. And I'm just going to do a quick yellow and orange for his eye. So put yellow down first, get the orange, chuck a little bit in the top there, and then blend it down so it merges. Like that. Then you can see that it's like a gradient, a seamless gradient sort of thing. But yeah, and then the next trick, again, is to grab that white gel pen, which is good for your highlights, obviously. So, just drop this stuff off the page. So obviously if our sun's going to coming over here, all, most of these parts here will be a bit more white. So, Sometimes with the white gel pen you have to just kind of scribble it all just a little bit because it like the opacity sort of thing it goes really faded and you can't really see it through the pen but just give it a bit of a scribble and it'll work pretty well. Alright so I'm just going to add in these highlights. You can add some quite more dramatic highlights but I like to just do some nice simple lines to where the light would come through sort of thing. 
leaving breaks in the lines because it looks more interesting than having like just one solid line across the whole damn drawing. And then we'll also have a little bit in here on the edge from the sun coming through the arm. And definitely, as I was saying probably before, with the gel sure pen, don't rub, don't your, arm rub your arm across it. until it's dry because it will smudge across your picture. Just adding a light to his eye. A little bit more up here. In his forehead, in his horns. And you know, you don't need to go crazy. Like you don't need to do every single line, every single outside, you know? I'm just doing the bits that that sun would reflect into, like going this way. See, just like that. But, as I said, that blue is pretty harsh, so I'm not quite a fan of that blue either. Maybe a little bit lighter than just the flat out blue. But, the ultramarine is supposed to be good for blending, so you could probably, if you did like a scribble over here and added that red in there, you could probably get a purple. Because Jazza picked these colours to be able to blend them to make new colours because he only had obviously 12. So you can blend them to make new colours. Mind you, shadings are probably a bit difficult, more difficult when you're blending all these colours together. But like the red and blue makes this interesting maroony purple here. If you did that in between the lines somewhere, you'd probably get something nice. But yeah, so that's the markers. Now I'm gonna quickly rearrange these back into my back into my container because I've kind of when you use these markers, they go everywhere and they're everywhere, so <laughs> put them all back in there. Not necessarily in order, just to be away and not all over the place. All right, so now that we've done individually, we've got the pencil. Oh yeah, see, so be careful with that because it'll go straight through there. If you try and blend the colors, obviously as well as generally, like the more layers you use with these pens, the more likely it's gonna go straight through the other drawings. So just even on this paper, so be careful with that, otherwise you're gonna ruin your drawings. But yeah, so I've got, what I've done here to save a little bit of time is I've used the the Prisma Prismacolor Cole Erase Pencil that Jazza has given us for sketching. It's good sketching because it just kind of blends into your drawing once you start colouring in and it's easy to erase. Just like the, um, the Mechanical Pencil which is practically a lead pencil, although semi-pointless once you use all the lead. I guess you could buy more 5 mil lead, but you don't get any refills for this stuff. But yeah, all well for that. Anyway, so I've drawn this three-headed border collie dog, which you probably would know as a Cerberus, Cerberus, the three-headed dog from hell, except it's a border collie instead. And I'm gonna show you the my, how this, my favorite pen works. 
which is really fun. It's so much fun. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna show you. Whoop. This is the tip of it. So it looks, it's pretty much just a bit of plastic with like black on the nib, but it's relatively flexible that you can like, it bends to a point. So when you draw, that's how you get the thicker the lines, which is really great, which is why I love it so much. So then when you go draw, you can go thin for like the details and then you can thicken it out for the outside bits. So like, for example, if we go out here for his fur, you can go thin for the top of the fur and then thickish for the bottom just by pressing down on the pen. So go thin. I guess that's why it's such a nice calligraphy pen. Like it says on the marker, it's a calligraphy pen because you know, you need your thick and thin lines to actually draw something. But yeah, you just go push down when you want something hard. So like, for example, if I'm gonna lightly go down and then go like this, you know, thick to thin. Well, thin to thick, that sort of thing, depending on how hard you press, which I love. I absolutely love that. And then when you put it on the paper, it actually Especially, it has that really nice comic look to it. Like, oof, I love it. It's like smooth, and I just love the effects of this pen. I tell you. So I'll go ahead and quickly draw this up, and then I will show you how to mix the pens, the markers, and the pencils. Alrighty, so now that we've drawn all this, I will show you how easy it is to rub out all of this blue from these mark from this pen. Oops. This rubber's really fully a party though. Maybe got a dud. Fiber castle rubbers are usually pretty good, but this one's gonna have to pull it out. Chunks of it have been coming off while I've been erasing things, so I've had Fabricaster ones before, they're just never this bad. Okay. 
Yeah, see? It takes up quite a lot of the... Obviously you can still see little bits, but that goes away when you put color into it. So, like I said, this one's gonna be a mixed one, so I'm gonna use both the pencils and the markers. I'll show you how good it works. So, if I grab these, these are border collies. So we'll use the black. But especially if you colour lightly, instead of pressing really hard like you do on the pencil, just pencil by itself, if you go fairly lightly, like so. I'm just going to quickly colour in all this grey and I'll be right back in just a second. Alrighty, so I've got all the grey in, and so I'll get my greys over here. Use the talking bird in the background, if you hear him. I've got my three greys. Now, at first I'm just going to use the medium grey, just to add the shadows. As you can see, it just kind of nicely blends in there, like that. It just nicely kind of blends in that pencil at the same time as adding extra. So what I'm going to do is add that darker grey. So you just kind of experiment with as, as you go sort of thing. So I'll just finish 
fill in all this in here. But it also keeps that texture, that pencil texture underneath. Like, so for example, with this dog, it keeps that fluffy, fluffy sort of feel. But yeah, as you can see, it's all like kind of blended in. And we'll get this darker gray and go back in for those shadows quickly. Just lightly. Because then once we've got that in there, at the worst times I tell ya. Anyway, so as we have that, I'll go back in with the light greys and just kind of blend it in there. That gives us that gradient in the shadows. So as you can see, you still keep that nice texture in the background. So it's not as smooth, but it <laughs> keeps it patterned. the pattern as well as the shade it shadows. So it's got that coarse fairy sort of look to it. And that's why the pencils are good because when you get yucky reds and greens and all that it keeps like a nice texture and then you can fiddle around so like for example because I've got a lot of white fur you can kind of add just that light light grey in there as shading and it just adds a little bit to it instead of going like your straight up gray like from your pencils or your black or all that it's just kind of a light shade you know and then if you want to add a little bit more you just go up one color And add just a little bit and then blend it all in sort of thing. They work similar to Copics, not as good with the blending, but pretty close. Like when you see it in a minute. We'll grab our this one and just kind of add that extra. Sometimes you have to keep going over the top of it a bit for it to actually blend in like letting the liquid seep in there. But like down here, for example, see how messy that looks right now. If I sit there and just kind of go over the top of it a bit, you can see that it's slowly blending in. See how it's less messy and then once that dries up and seeps into the paper it'll look much nicer so like for this eyes we'll use some different colors so we've got blue for this one over here and then i'm gonna go green for the middle one yellow for the end one and then to add that little bit of shading on top just kind of up the top there depending on the differentiation of the pencils and things 
it will depend if it adds a little bit of shading or just to blend the pencils in. It's like this blue is going to be quite different. It'll be a little bit, quite a bit darker. And if that's the case, just grab your blender and squiggle it in there and like just blend it all up a little bit. And we also have our grey noses, so I want them to be shiny. So instead of doing the pencil underneath, if we grab that grey and just go on top. So they're shiny noses with that pencil underneath. Gives them that fluff. Um, grab a little bit of black in there. Just the light one again. So it's a lot of swapping and changing with pencils and pens, pencils and markers, and to like blend all that in there. Then once you're done, you bet, we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab this white gel pen and add some little highlights and details, especially with the eyes. Like I always leave the white off the eyes because you can just kind of add that extra straight over there like that. See, now he has emotion, he's a happy doggy. And the noses add a little bit of a shine to those. And then if you really want to be adventurous, you could add a little bit of shine to the top of that fur. But it works the same. This gel pen is actually such a good gel pen that it could probably go on top of most mediums, like most supplies. That's why it's such a popular pen. And then maybe a little bit of shine to its furry toes. And you can, you know, you don't have to do just the straight lines with the pen. Because if, say, he's got fluff, just add a little bit of a jagged edge to it. So it's like he's got fluffies. Like he's a fluffy puppy with some fluffy shines on his legs. Like that, so we've got our fluffy puppy mixed with the Spectrum Noir and the Polychromo pencils. Throwing pens across the room now. And the only other things I need to show you how to use are the Tombow and the graphic pens, which are quite a bit more. Um, detailed sort of thing so I'll be right back I've got to go and draw two more drawings with the pencil one for the Tombow and one for these guys and I'll show you why in just a second you'll see it in a second but for me it'll probably be a few hours or a day or so but ready to go set now alrighty now I look at last drawing to show you how to idea from a fellow YouTuber. I'll have him come up on the screen about now because I can't remember his name as I do this because I'm doing this last minute sort of thing. But yes, I'll put his name up on the screen. He suggested do Jazza as a fantasy creature, but I didn't know what to do for Jazza. Like Jazza isn't like dragony or he could be kind of like a lion, like a griffin, but there's no point to him having like wings or something. So it was like, oh, the only fantasy creature that I can kind of think of is possibly like a bunyip because you know, he's obviously, he's Australian. Um, he's always been called the koala because of his big nose and his big ears. So I figured if I did him as like, a, I'd call him a jazza bear because He's like a bear, but he's got a koala nose and koala ears. But he's naughty to the point where he write, he draws on all the trees. And he's just been caught drawing on a tree, and that's why he's standing here with half drawing and everything. Because he's been caught drawing. 
No surprise there, right, Pajaza? Anyways, that was a complicated one. So I guess if you have any better suggestions for drawing Jazza as a fantasy creature, because I don't see him as much of an other fantasy creature like he draws the other creatures. I don't see him as much of the other creatures. Anyway, so first thing to think about is your sizes. So you probably can't see them, I'm not too sure. But we've got a 0 0.2, a 0 0.4, a 0 0.8 and a brush. So when you grab this box, obviously you want to test what thickness these pens are first to yourself. So like this is the 0 0.2. And this is just for your reference. But make sure if you did get the box that you do check it because it's nice to know the feel of something before you use it. And then. Um, our, our swatches you could say and as you can see they're quite different like you could probably get away with using 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 for the same thing but what I'm going to do for this one if you're drawing something start off with depending on I guess how far away the objects are in the picture so you see our little jazza bear is obviously going to be right up. It, the same idea as if you're drawing a landscape. The further away is going to be lighter and the closer to the camera is going to be darker. Probably not as dark as the brush. But we'll see what we can do for that. So in this picture we've got this tree that's all the way back here. And the best way to go about doing this is grab your lowest smallest one and do that small tree. Because this helps show, this is also good for just general line art because you could be drawing something that's like shaded in different levels of the picture and all that. So, like we've got that one. And then, maybe if I just... Use the budgie in the background he's always going to be noisy so don't be surprised if you hear a budgie in the background because I can't stop the budgie from chattering while recording and there's nowhere that I can record with that budgie he's a noisy noisy anyways so we've got our 0.2 there now if I grab the, the 0.4 and work on this tree here you'll see that it looks it makes a heck of a difference, like it's darker, like it gives that dark-esque sort of But again, these this can also be, you know, line art is a pretty tricky subject to like get a hold of properly. So Definitely look into tutorials if you're not sure about the line arts because that's definitely one of those things that takes quite a bit to learn and get proper. Alright, so as we have that 0.2 tree needs another. So I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but the difference, it just makes it look closer. So like I said, you can also use this for like shading. So like, example like I've done here, the darker pieces you can use the thicker pens, but you'll see as I keep going. Let's refocus that. And I'll use 0 0.8 for this front tree where the jazz bear is actually standing. What? 
anyways, as I was saying, so we were at point four. Point eight. Point eight to do the closer tree. A normal marker you can't scribble it's a very smooth sort of thing which is quite difficult which is quite difficult to do when you have such a little character which is why you generally can use the felt tip pen like the little felt tip pens and just thicken your lines but for this example I'm just going to use this dark one so I start with the eyes just Eyes better. So, like, a good way is you start off with small and you go thick where you want it. Thick. But with some markers, it's only so thin they go. because today is a rainy day and there's no clear sunlight anywhere but it's the only time I can record the rest of this video because I have to do it when nobody's home I mean I can do it when people are home but it's easier to record when nobody's home which is why it's taken so long to get it out But this same goes as the Tombow marker. You've just got to kind of go with it. But it's not often I use big puffy brushes. as liners purely because I find them too thick and puffy like you can get some pretty good um pretty good designs with them I just I like the small and thin ones that's why this one was my favorite because it's a brush marker but it's not like a puffy brush marker and it works really nicely but there are some people like Jazza, for example, who can use these brush markers, especially the Tombow one, and just be brilliant at them. You've just got to either practice or just be naturally gifted at these things. Mm. 
Practice is key, guys. And learning. So like they all say, it's all about practice, but you can learn the wrong thing. But anyway, so make sure you watch and look up references for things you want to draw. Otherwise you could be learning the wrong thing. And these brush pens are especially good for calligraphy. Anyways, oh, my terrible camera skills. Anyway, so that's an example of all those pens and how you can use them. I probably won't use the graphic liners that often. I do have a few of the Faber Castell graphic liners that I've had for quite a while that I don't really like, but that's personal preference. Just because I've always, I mean, I should probably expand and use more than one pen at a time for different details. But I've always looked for one good brush pen, one good pen, and that's this guy. But yeah, you've seen mine, and your preference is your preference. Let me know what you think, and yeah. Don't forget to to check out all my my other video with Jazz's things and to Facebook because there's a few things on Facebook that. I have done but yeah I hope you enjoyed might not be like as exciting as I hoped it to be because I couldn't work out a nice creature for Jazza except for a koala bear or a drop bear a Jazza drop bear <laughs> drops out of the trees draws on the trees and then runs away but yes thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video whenever that may be because it's difficult to record but I'm always posting pictures on my Facebook and Instagram and slowly Twitter but mostly Facebook and Instagram so check that out and don't forget to like and subscribe and share all these videos. I'll see you on next time. Bye!